Hello everyone, welcome to the Learn Something channel where the goal is to learn something new every day. Today let's talk about locked candidates. If you watched my previous Solve With Me video, that was episode 6 in my follow along videos, you might remember at minute 1449 I placed a 2-6 matching pair in the top rank and once I did that I was able to eliminate the 2 in the same row. This was because the twos are locked into that position in block two. I was then able to eliminate any other two that might appear in the same row. This type of locked candidate is also called pointing or block line elimination. Let's have a closer look at this type of elimination technique. There are two types of locked candidates, type one and type two. Type 1 lock candidates use what is called a pointing strategy, also called block line elimination. Type 2 lock candidates use a claiming strategy, also known as line block elimination. Let's have a look at another example of pointing. Here we have block 1 filled in with all the possible candidates, and row B is also filled in with all the possible candidates. Now take a closer look at block 1. The 7s are locked into the same line segment, row B, in block 1. They can only be in row B in that particular block, block 1. If we see that, then we have what are called locked candidates. They are locked into that location, and now we can eliminate all the other 7s in the same row, row B. Since the only place in block 1 that can contain a 7 is in one of these two cells in row B, we don't know which cell, but we know it's in one of these, then there can't be another 7 in the same row, so we can go ahead and cross off all the other 7s in row B. Now you can see why sometimes this is called block line elimination. The locked 7 candidates are in the block, block 1, and then we can use that to eliminate all the candidates in that same line. It's a row in this case, but it could also have been a column. If you think of a row as a line going across and a column as a line going down, then you can see why this is called block line elimination. Once we eliminate the sevens in row B, we are left with a naked single in column six, the two, so this cell becomes a two. Now let's take a look at type 2 locked candidates, sometimes called claiming or line block elimination. This is the converse of type 1 block line elimination. With type 2 locked candidates, we look at the line first and then eliminate the extra candidates in the same block. Let's look at this example. Because we are looking at the line first, it's the opposite of what we did before with type 1 locked candidates, where we looked at the block first. Let's take a look at this example more closely. In this case, the line we are going to look at is a column instead of a row, but it can easily be a line across instead of down. Let's look at column one. We can see that the only place a four can go in column one is here and here. If we see that, then we know a four can't go anywhere else in the block, so we can eliminate all the other fours in the block. And now we have a naked single here, the eight. We also have a triplet here in column one. The one, two, and four are the only numbers that can go here, so we can eliminate this one in block one, and now this cell becomes a three. The triplet also eliminates the one and two from here, and we just placed a 3, so we can eliminate that. So now this cell becomes a 5. And this triplet also allows us to eliminate all the other 1s and 2s from elsewhere in the block. So now this cell is a 6. And now this cell can't be a 1 or an 8, so it must be a 9. And then this cell is a 7. I started this example by showing you the locked 4s in column 1 and then eliminating all the other fours in the block as an illustration of type 2 locked candidates. But in this case, the locked candidates were also part of a triplet, so we could have eliminated the fours that way as well. 
Many times you can get to the same endpoint using different methods. Actually, this happens quite often. Two people will solve a puzzle in different ways depending on what they see first and how their brain works out the logic. In the next video, I'll do another Solve With Me medium level puzzle to review all the techniques we've learned so far. Eventually, I will do a hard level Solve With Me puzzle, but I want to cover X-Wings and other rectangle rules before I get to the hard level puzzles. Please make sure to subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.